CTV's Danielle Hamamjan is standing by for us uh, in Kiev. She's keeping a very close eye. Uh, Danielle, good to see you. So again, you, you heard me there talking about now what's happening in the Donbass region, that battle beginning there. What's the latest uh, on the ground from what, uh, what you've been hearing? Well, we understand that the first city ha has fallen to the Russians, and that is the city of Kremina, a city of 18,000 people. And as you mentioned, one governor in the region told its residents quite simply, there is no time to think. Leave now, or if you stay, you will get killed. This offensive has been foreshadowed, and it was highly anticipated. And in the words of President Zelensky, there is a significant part of the Russian army that is focused on this offensive. Some of Ukrainians' best trained troops and soldiers are on the ground. They've been on the ground there for years because of the war uh, in the eastern part of Ukraine that was triggered in 2014. Just a big, a, an exp big picture uh, explanation here. The Donbass is made up of Donetsk and Luhansk, two, region, two regions which prior to the war uh, had, were controlled by both the Ukrainians and Russian-backed separatists. Um, just days before the invasion on February 24th, President Putin declared those two areas independent. Should now Russian forces gain control of Luhansk and Donetsk, the next step would be for Russia to annex it to, the, to, main, to mainland Russia the way it did Crimea back in 2014. But it started overnight. The Russians say that 1,200 targets were hit. Um, and as I say, the first city has fallen to the Russians. And don't forget, there is May 9th coming up. That is Victory Day in Russia. A very um, sentimental, very significant day for the Russians as they commemorate uh, the defeat of Nazi Germany in 1945. The Soviet Union at the time suffered more casualties than any other country. And, and so President Putin will want something to present to the Russian people. They will want a victory, a win of some sort. And they're hoping this is going to be it. Indeed. And couple that, uh, Danielle, with the situation in Mariupol and the, uh, the push hard now for Russia to be taking over that region as well. I mean, I think no matter how many times you see those pictures coming out of Mariupol, it's still simply unbelievable. The city has simply been pulverized. It is apocalyptic. There are bodies like waiting to be collected on the side of the road, but inside this massive steel plant um, that is 11 square kilometers, it is sort of a mini city. There are Ukrainian fighters in this vast network of underground passageways, but there are also about a thousand civilians believed to be uh, family members of those fighters. Now, they were presented today with yet another ultimatum to lay down their weapons and surrender. But remember what happened just 48 hours ago. That same ultimatum, ultimatum was issued and they completely ignored it. So we'll have to see how that plays out today. But the Russians have said in the past, any more resistance and we will, quote, destroy you. But the order has been clear from Ukrainian defense, defense officials that they will fight for Mariupol until the very end. Yeah, indeed. CTV's Danielle Hamamjan for us uh, standing by in Kiev with the latest on this. Always appreciate this, Danielle. Thank you for the update.